Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today, I'm going to share with you an incredibly powerful little trick. The one thing that I really wish somebody had shared with me when I first got going on guitar. I was going to a lot of jam sessions and stuff, and I'd see somebody just start playing some chords or whatever, and someone else would just look and then start doing a solo. I'm like, how'd you do that? Sort of, you know, is that just some insane talent? Is it magic? What's going on? So the magic trick that was eluding me was understanding the chords in a key. Now, I would, of course, recommend that you go through a proper music theory course like the one available over on my website and learn all of the notes in the note circle and about intervals and major scale construction and all of that good stuff. It's all very, very useful, I promise. But I'm going to show you this in a way that you don't even need to know that. What you do need, really, is to know the note names on the thickest two strings. And it will be helpful if you know your E and A shape bar chords, but I'll show you how you can use it with open chords too if you're uh, not at that point where you can play your bar chords. It still works just the same. So let's get to a close-up and find out what I'm talking about. The first thing you need to know and hopefully memorize is this little pattern here. It's the first six notes of the major scale. I'm starting here on a G. It's the third fret of the thicker string. So I'm playing the third fret, miss a note, play a note, miss a note, play a note. And then it's exactly the same pattern on the fifth string. Third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la. Now, if you know the major scale, T, do, you'll know that there's another note there. There's seven notes in the major scale. You do, re, mi, fa, so, la, T, do. But we're going to leave off that last note because the chord built off it is very, very uncommon, at least in uncommon in regular pop and rock music. So it can overcomplicate things. So we're just going to leave it out, pretend it doesn't exist. When you get to know a minor seven flat five chord, if you're getting into jazz or something like that, then the rest of this theory will be pretty au fait anyway. So the next thing to learn is a little pattern that I'm hoping, again, that you'll memorize. It is major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Okay, major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Starts with the major, because we're looking at the chords in the major key here. At this point, we'll talk about minor keys way down the line. So major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. So now what we're going to do is apply that chord pattern to these notes. So the first note is there, and that was major. So we're going to play a major chord, a major bar chord. The second note was there, and that was minor. So we're going to play a minor chord. The third note was there. Going to play that as a minor. Play that one there, that was a major. That one was a major. And then that one, which is a minor. So we ended up with this pattern major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Okay? Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. Major, you just use the chord shapes now on those root notes. Now I'm going to name the chord. So this is G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor. Now, if you've been playing guitar any time at all, you've almost certainly encountered songs that are using G, C, D, A minor, B minor, and E minor. So many songs have this G, D, E minor, C. It's the most common, one of the most common chord progressions of all time. There's so many. If you've learned Knock It On Heaven's Door or Heart of Gold or Wish You Were Here, they're all using chords from the key of G. So if you wanted to improvise over it, you could solo using the G major scale or the G major pentatonic, and it will sound great. This is The way it works is so fascinating because all of those chord tones come from the one scale. Now, this is a lot easier explained on the piano. I think the easiest way to explain this is on the piano because everything is just so clearly laid out. So C major scale, no sharps and flats. So only the white notes gives you do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So to make a chord, start on the root, we miss a note, play the next note, miss a note, play the next note. That would be a C major chord. If we move each one of those notes up one scale step, so the C moves to D, the E moves to F, and the G moves to A, we get this chord, and this is a D minor chord. Now, I'm not going to go into the theory of why that's a minor chord, but hopefully you can hear there's a major sound to minor sound. If we do the same thing, move the chord up another step, we get an E minor, then an F major, G major, A minor, 
B diminished and back to C. So these are the chords in the key of C. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished and C. Now it's really clear to see that all of those chords come from that one scale. So you can play any of those chords in any order and the scale fits over the top. So if we have C major, piano player so I'm just kind of mucking around you see I, I don't know what I'm doing and I can just explore this scale with any of those chords in any order So I just explained it there on piano in the key of C because that's the easiest one on piano with no sharps and flats. It worked, the same idea works in every key. Let's just put it into practice now on the guitar as well. So if I'm using a chord progression, I can use any of those chords in any order, okay? So let's do a couple of these. Um, we do that most common chord progression of all time. So it's a G, a D, an E minor, and a C. We could do it that way as bar chords or we could do it this way. So G, D, E minor, C. Either one of those things will work. I'm going to do it as bar chords just so you, to help solidify your understanding of those root notes and the chord shapes. I'm going to use my little looper here. I just put down a little uh, a drum thing before. So uh, let me just play that first. We'll get the feel. Two. There we go. So those chords. So G. I'm hoping you get the idea that the chords and the scale work really well together. Obviously, I was kind of using the scale a bit more obviously and in a linear fashion. Normally, I'd be looking for a little bit more motif development, that kind of thing. But I wanted to get the idea across very clearly that the scale and those chords really, really fit together. And it doesn't just work in the key of G, of course, it works in any key. And just to give you another little fun example, let me just uh, remove that loop so I can start another one. So let's put it in this key. I, now, obviously I know what the notes are, but I don't need to. As long as I make up this pattern, and I play major, minor, minor, that's a bit squeezy up there, but major, major, minor. So long as I stick to those chords, well, we don't have to use all of them. I might just use this one, and that one, and that one something you, you, whatever chords you like in whatever order it's going to work you don't even have to have a set pattern but it's probably going to work a little better if you do so uh let me just try that one uh here we go play the loop oh so used all of them.
Now in this case, I know what the notes are, I know what the chords are, I know what key I'm in, but you wouldn't have to. So long as you're just looking at that shape, and you've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. You could put it anywhere, you could put it here or here. There's a good ugly key that most people won't, wouldn't want to play in, the key of F sharp. As long as you've got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, it doesn't really matter if you call this one a C sharp or a D flat, technically it's a C sharp, but it doesn't matter. As long as you're seeing the pattern and you're using just those chords, you can solo. That's what I mean. You don't even need to know that's F sharp major, G sharp minor, A sharp minor, B, C sharp major. D sharp minor. You don't need to know that. I've got, I think it's a good idea to. I think you should know the notes on the guitar neck and you should be able to figure out what the proper chords are in the key, but you don't have to. And remember as well that you can use this as a tool for playing in open position as well. So for example, let's do it in the key of A quickly. So uh, we put our first finger on the note A. You're right there Ziggy, trying to interrupt my video having a scratch. Okay. So if I know this is A major, B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, and F sharp minor. If I don't know how to play a B minor, a C sharp minor, or an F sharp minor, I could just use the A, D, and the E, and I could play them as open chords. So there's A, E, D, So you can also use this little six note pattern to figure out what the chords are and then use them in an open position. It's not just a thing for bar chords. You don't need to know the names of the chords unless of course you want to make that little transfer over. So long as you stick to the shape and you know what key you're in, it's going to be loads of fun. Like I said, you can use the major scale, you can use the major pentatonic. Sometimes it's possible to weave in stuff like the minor pentatonic. It's theoretically wrong, but there are occasions where you can kind of make it work. And this A, D and E chord progression is one of those ones where technically it should be the major scale that works, but sometimes you can wedge in that minor pentatonic. Good example of this one is a uh, knocking on heaven's door, the Guns N' Roses version slash plays mostly the major scale, but then rips into a bit of minor pentatonic in there as well. So uh, just to explain a little bit about that. So major scale. So the big question that many people rightly ask is, well, what do you do with songs where the chords aren't in the same key, of which there are many? So there's a couple of different approaches. Sometimes the chords will be mostly in a key, and then there'll just be one or two chords that aren't. In which case you need to treat those chords separately. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, the simple way is just to look at the chord shape and pick some of the notes out of the chords. Just literally, visually look at a chord and then go, well, they're the notes I'm going to use on that particular chord. There are more complex versions of doing that where you can look at modes or uh, a particular scale over a particular chord, but that's not what I'd recommend that you start off with. The other thing that you'll find commonly is that there are a bunch of chords that don't technically fit together but the minor pentatonic scale works really well over them. A lot of kind of bluesy based things have that kind of thing going on. So uh, you might experiment with using the minor pentatonic, you might experiment with using the major scale and just taking a detour if you know that there's just a particular chord that's the culprit there. It does take a little bit more effort and what I would recommend that you do is get really hip with playing diatonically, that is using chords and a scale from one particular key, first before you start exploring those other things. 
If you want to get good at doing this, the answer is pretty simple. You have to practice it, like with most things. By far, the best way to do it, I think, is to find a jam buddy, to agree a key. One person plays the scale, one person plays the chords in any order, and you just jam. Go for a couple of minutes, swap over, the other person plays the solos. Keep just swapping it around, change the key from time to time. So literally go, okay, uh, let's jam in the key of G. So we go, okay, what's the chords in the key of G then? So that was a G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, and E minor. You write them down on a piece of paper. One person plays those chords literally in any order, plays, you know, three of them or five of them or all of them or one of them, doesn't matter. And the other person experiments with taking a solo over it. It is loads and loads of fun. You will learn a hell of a lot about playing guitar. You learn more about improvising, all of that good stuff. If you want to learn more about using the major scale and how to make music with the major scale, I have a course over in grade four on the website. It's called Major Scale Maestro. It'll teach you all five major scale patterns and how to use them. That's the key thing here. Don't get be one of those people who learns all five scale patterns and can't actually make up a solo. We learn one and we learn how to use it. Then we learn two. We learn how to combine them together and we keep making music all the time. It's a great course. Definitely encourage you to get into doing that if you're learning about the major scale and you want to get those five patterns down, link up and play all over the fretboard. It's loads and loads of fun. But this this thing is a deeper thing than that. It'll help you recognize the, the keys of the songs that you're already playing. It's just... It's, it's the foundation of so much, so much good music theory. Like I said, I've got a whole theory course over on the website. You might want to go and check that out as well if you want a deeper understanding of how all this fits together about how to name the different chords, what the difference is between a major and minor and how you work that out and uh, what the notes are in all of the different keys and know that like here rather than just having to do it here. That is all really, really helpful for your guitar journey. But... This little simple trick, you can use it even without any of that. And hopefully it'll bring you a whole new sense of joy when you're having a jam with your friends. So I'm hoping I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves out there. Have a great day. Bye-bye.